Hi guys, it's Matt Herman from ESU again, and we're going to continue on today with our version 4 series. So our subject today is how do you change a sound slot using the template pack. So to get started, I have a uh, version 4 file open, and a lot of the reason that this is done is because we're continually adding new horns, and if we don't use the 4.0, uh, the select files don't really have the ability to go in and just change a horn. So I'll often, we'll go back and we'll retouch files once in a while to refresh some things, you know, put some new horns in if we get some new recordings. A lot of times what we'll do though is add those new recordings horn-wise and other ambient sounds to brand new sound files from new Prime Mover recordings. So um, sometimes we'll do one with a new horn and maybe somebody wants that in an older Prime Mover. So that's where the version 4 can come in handy because they can download that version 4 file open up the sound slots and uh, just make an exchange. So when we create those new horns, we try to put them into the template packs. Now they get updated from time to time as well. And the most recent one is 1.9. The 1.9 template pack, as you see here, uh, there is a nice change in that where if you're a North American modeler or even an Australian modeler, there's some new North American and Australian sound files in there from our most recent recordings. So we added a lot of the new horns and new bells. Uh, we added even some logic um, for class lights and some other things. So we have all of those little pieces so that we can put them into the sound files. I like to think of this a little bit like a smorgasbord or a, uh, a buffet. Um, that's kind of the difference between the select and the 4.0 in a way. The select is a lot like a value meal. You kind of get what you get. Um, there might be 16 horns to choose from and you can rewrite the selects, but the version 4 lets you break things apart piece by piece and take just what you want and get rid of what you don't. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to change out well, the thing that's probably changed out the most and that would be a new horn. So if we go into sound slot 3 and we click on that and highlight it, then we're going to go over to our template pack. Now um, I'm in North America so we're going to find a, a North American or maybe a US horn. Uh, let's pick a Oh, I don't know. Let's pick a Nathan. I like P5. So um, let's scroll down, see what we can find here. We do have a couple new P5s in here. Now, maybe I want to know what these sound like. So there's a couple ways to do that. You can bring it into the file, or you can simply double click on it, and that will open. Remember our last video, we have a simulator. So if I just click on it, I can then single press the, the simulator and open it up that way. Or I can double click and that opens the simulator with the sound already playing. Now when you do that, sometimes it takes like two clicks to finally activate the function in the simulator and then turn it off. So sometimes it's better just click it once. Um, if you have the simulator open, you have to close it before you get into a new sound. So close it, open it back again with that sound highlighted. Now you can hear that sound. And you can play it just like you do on your throttle if you press it very quickly. Now it's not a playable button, or I should say it's not a momentary button. It's a latching button. So you have to uh, turn it on, turn it off for a very short blow. Um, here's another one again. Let's close the simulator, open it back up. Now it's open with this sound. another P, uh, P5, Let's close simulator, open it back up, I like that one, let's go ahead and just choose it so that we can keep moving along here. So we've got both sound slot that we're going into and the horn that we've chosen or you know it could be anything, the sound that we've chosen, in this case it's a horn, and then we press the left arrow and that will now ask me if I want to replace what's in sound slot 3 or whatever it is I have highlighted. In this case, I want to say yes. I'm going to simply replace everything that was there. 
Now, when I do that, what's happening is I'm not, this isn't just a WAV file. This is an entire schedule. So now that I've done that, I can open this up and I can see the schedule is now all pulled over. So all of, remember, these are transitions, these are states. Here we have a container that's holding different pieces of other states inside. So that's all pulled with it. It's not just WAV files. Now, if I go in and maybe I'll choose another one here, and I can do this all day long, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is just in the software. So, um, you know, we're not actually making any changes to the decoder quite yet. So we're pulling this next one over. Do I want to replace it? Yes, I do. Now it's replaced. And you notice the name will change along with everything else. Now that I get into here, I double click. And you'll notice it has a very similar look to it, but it is slightly different. Get into my loop. You'll see the last loop had some other states as they were exiting out of the loop. So that's as simple as it gets, guys. It's, uh, it's very simple. Cl click again. Click the sound slot that you want to change. Click the actual wave that you want to bring over there. Click the red button or, or the blue button. Where I'll get red button, <laughs> um, you know. And, and even if it's the same, it will still ask you. It's going to go through the motions. It didn't actually change anything there. Um, but now that it's there, now we can just play with our sound slots here. Select it, close and open again. And remember, now we're just playing what's inside the file. Now this file is only on my computer. So in order to get these sounds onto my version 4 decoder, I have to write the sounds again. So I have to go up and either hit the red arrow with the musical notes or go to programmer and go to write sound data and you'll see it's the same icon. Um, wait for the sounds to be loaded again and then I can try it inside my decoder. So I'm not going to go over much of that because there is some how-to videos on the general usage of the low programmer. But it is important that when you make these changes that's only inside the file to get them into the decoder, you do have to write the sounds again. Um, again, now if you're just, just as a recap to some other videos, if you're just making a CV change, maybe a function mapping change, uh, maybe a volume change, those are just CV changes, then you can use the red arrow on the piece of paper and that will write only the CVs. Now that'll only take about a minute, whereas it will take about 20 minutes to do the sound. So often what I'll do is I'll make my sound changes and I can do my testing right here um, once I know everything is good, then I'll write the sound. Because rather than writing the sound, which takes 20 minutes to a half an hour um, each time, I'll do it all at once so that it won't take quite as long. So um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned. If you have any questions, please comment. Let us know. Uh, any suggestions, uh, maybe for new videos, some things I haven't covered yet. There will be a whole series coming. So um, if we haven't covered it, we probably will. But if you have anything specific that you'd like to see us do, just let us know and we'll add that to the list if it's not already there. Um, again, I hope you've learned a lot and I hope you join us next time. Have a great day.